Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Tiffany Hernandez on the podcast. She's coming to us all the way from Colorado. She's the 2018 NPC Rocky Mountain figure champ. And then she also won that competition in 2017 in the physique overall champ. She's also a hairdresser and a makeup artist, but currently she's our guest. Tiffany, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what inspired you to adapt that healthy and fit lifestyle? So when I first started, I weighed 240 pounds and I had gone to the doctor and the doctor told me, you know, if I don't change my ways, then in 10 years, I'd probably have a heart attack or heart disease because my levels of my cholesterol was so bad. So I just ended up buying the Atkins book and I picked it up and read it from front to back started walking after work and uh, lost 120 pounds. And then after that took me about two years. And then after that, I went and I joined a gym and I seen a figure competitor and I went up to the trainer and I pretty much told him I want to do that. And he laughed at my face at first because he's like, you don't understand what it takes to become a, a competitor. But I just I just kept at it, kept working hard, and then a year later, I did my first show, which was The Warrior in Loveland, Colorado, and my first show, I did Women's Physique, and I, I took fourth place, and so that's what got me started initially, so health. Now, a lot of people that we talk about, especially women, I mean, and even guys too, they don't really start out sort of in the physique area. I mean, there's no figure for guys, but they normally just tend to like work their way up. You, you start out in physique early on did were you just naturally built then by the time since you've gotten all that weight loss done were you just naturally have that look of a physique competitor no I was really really skinny I had done like a lot of muscle wasting when I did the Atkins because I was in eating carbohydrates I thought you know in the book it pretty much tells you like carbohydrates is what makes you fat Later on in life now I understand like you need carbohydrates to sustain a you know to live your your brain and your body live off glucose. So I did a lot of muscle wasting, and when I when I started the gym, I weighed probably 110 pounds soaking wet, and I literally had to start from ground zero and work my way up. So one of the things that I always like to say is that if you were to go into a gym, as we see her dog there in the background, everyone just everyone just give a little awe for the dog. So one of the things that I sort of like to tell people or sort of make a point is that if you were to walk into a gym with 100 people, there are 100 different ways as to how people got in shape, whether it was their nutrition, how many reps they do, what exercises they do. Just every single little thing really makes it into what a person ends up looking like. Was that a hard experience for you starting out to sort of find out what worked best for your body, knowing that like individually stuff that works for someone else might not work as good for you? Yeah, because, you know, when you go into competing, you're obviously comparing yourself to other competitors. So I've always been told, even to this day, that I'm too small, that you don't have enough muscle, you're just too small. And that was actually the... It took me five years to finally listen to a trainer to tell me. He kept telling me, I don't think women's physique is, is good for you. You need to come down into figure. I think you'll do better in figure. And I, I was so bullheaded and I was just so determined. And I was like, no, nobody's going to tell me I can't do something. And then when I went to nationals last year, after I won the Rocky for women's physique, I looked around and I had to experience it and see it for myself. But the girls there were just so much bigger and I was so undersized and I know eventually I could get there, but it takes so much time to actually build that muscle and the muscle maturity. So some girls are just genetically gifted. Me, on the other hand, I'm just a small petite person. So I made that choice to come down into figure. And probably the biggest myth that we love to bust on this show is that a lot of women, and I mean, it has gotten better the last five years with Instagram, but a lot of women still have that belief where if they go into the gym and they touch one weight, they're just going to hulk out and gain 50 pounds of muscle overnight. It's just, they, they, they just think that they're just going to get so huge. Did you ever have that personal fear yourself? And even if you haven't, I mean, I bet you've probably had some women come up to you and just have, show their concern. What is your main response to that? I just tell them like women are not genetically made to do that unless you're taking sports enhancement drugs. Women just don't gain muscle like they do. Yeah, you're going to lean out and tone up a little bit, but we're just not genetically made to, to gain muscle like that. So, and that's what I try to explain to women. Like, it, it, it's not that easy. If it was that easy, 
I would be a lot bigger yep. a lot sooner. You know, it's taken me five years just to put on this little bit of um, muscle that I do have. And, you know, when I started, I was about 110. And when I went on stage last weekend, I was 130. Yeah. So it's taken me five years to put on 20 pounds of muscle. So that's that's what I usually tell women. I always like to tell the story of when I was in college, really starting to work out and getting bigger. I had a friend of mine. And she would always say, like, oh, you go to the gym. And, you know, I really kind of want to do that. But I'm just afraid that I'm going to get, you know, big or I'm going to get bulky. And then eventually one night I just told her, I said, look, the amount of weight that you carry in your purse when we go out to, like, clubs or we go to get stuff to eat weighs more than a lot of the dumbbells in the gym. And you're not getting any muscle from lugging that thing around all day. And then she kind of, that sort of convinced her. It's just one of those things where once you get in the gym and realize, you know, like, hey, that's a total myth, that that really, really helps. So I think just like getting in there and just taking that first step is really, really just the most important thing. And we'd love to hear first prep stories. What was your first prep like? Because for most people out there that don't know, I mean, when you start to look like your weight loss, that was a whole different nutrition set for you. But when you go into prep, that's just taking your nutrition and your weight training into a whole different level. I mean, that's just really going to the extreme. What was that experience like for you the first time? So, you know, when you go into prep, everything is weighed out to the T on the scale. It's timed every time you, you know, you take in a meal. It's, it's every three hours, you know, you got to take so much water in and like, you don't really, you don't really think about how much work actually goes into the nutrition part. And then, you know, on top of that, then you have to add all the cardio in the morning and then cardio post-workout. So it's tough. You know, it's really, really tough. It's it's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. But, you know, I don't know. Something hooked me. I did it once and then obviously I just keep doing it. It's like we almost put our bodies and our minds through that prep and just to see how far we can push ourselves. Mm -hmm. I always like to tell people, it's like, by looking at some of these comparisons, you would never think that they've ever run or never been on a treadmill a day in their lives just because they look so big and huge. But it's like, no, they, they're on the treadmill almost as much as they work out or some of them even more. It's just, it's one of those things where you just look at it, but they don't realize, I mean, to get that lean, you really, really, really have to take it up a notch. And we love to hear, I mean, being a very pale individual myself, I always love to hear, what was that experience like the first time putting that tan on for the first time? Because we've had so many stories where people were like, yeah, everything pops out. Like you see, you see muscles you never even knew that you had. What was that experience like for you the first time putting that tanner on? So when you see yourself, you know, get tanned and you're like, wow, you know, you look amazing. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when you have to wear it all day long and all night long without showering, the smell, the yes. smell of it and the, the stickiness on your hands and the experience, I still don't look forward to the tan. <laughs> but, you know, it has to be done. So that's what we do. We've heard, yeah, we've heard so many stories where people were like, yeah, never go backstage at one of those shows because the smell back there of everyone just never, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've learned that from all these people that come on the show. It's one of those things that I never really came into consideration, but yeah, that's, it, it, it's just one of those things where, yeah, you do look good, but then people don't realize that like you really can't do anything. You can't move around. You don't want to like smear it off on anything. So it really does hamper you at least for those, for those couple of days. And yeah. And then the worst part about it is the couple of days afterwards when your hands are just so so spotty and so gross yeah the tan is not not let something i look forward to <laughs> yeah it's yeah we've heard so many horror stories but yeah that's i mean it's just one of those things i guess that people have to people have to go through i guess but i have a lot of up-and-coming bands on the show as well as you know health and fitness people and i like to ask them sort of the same question for my bands i like to ask you know what's that thrill like performing live what does that feel like and i think that that also applies to some of the competitors that i have on what's that experience like for you when you get to walk on stage you know show off all of that hard work that you've been you know you've dieted down weeks upon weeks or months upon months and you've really just been hitting the gym really really hard what is that feeling like to finally be able to walk on stage and show that off it's that's the reason why i do it is it's that that you know that 30 seconds of fame because you're up there and you're just like look at me look at everything that i put you know i all the mornings at 4 a.m. having to do our cardio and, you know, starving throughout the day. I mean, you're not really starving, but your metabolism is going so fast. You're just hungry constantly. And then to go up there and actually present yourself and do well, um, it's, it's a feeling that you can't describe. I mean, I know that you're only on there usually for like 30 seconds to your own personal routine, but that does that does that seem to go by super, super quick or does it seem to does that 30 seconds seem to last a lot longer than it actually does? So like this last weekend when I when I did it, it I was actually up there for three minutes holding oh. the same pose because they kept doing comparisons mm -hmm. and kept me in the middle. 
Well, they kept switching the girls from side to side, and I had to hold that pose. And that was probably one of the hardest things because, you know, when you go on stage or, well, when you're the day of the show, you don't get to take in very much water. So when you're on stage, you're trying to smile, but you're so caught in mouth that, you know, your, your lips are sticking to your teeth mm -hmm. and, and you're just trying to hold it together. But yeah, sometimes I think it just kind of depends on the situation. Like at nationals, I felt like I was up there for maybe 10 seconds and then they want, you know, it's like, get them in, get them out. Yeah. But this time I, I was on stage for quite a long time. What pose did you have to hold for three minutes? Um, just my front relaxed pose. Oh, for, yeah. I was gonna say at least you weren't doing like an ab or anything like that, where they just had you like go for like go for like three minutes. That would, that would have been horrible. Would've... I mean, when you're doing your front though, you're you're actually having to flare your. Oh legs yeah, that's true. That's like, true. Flare your legs, so you're yeah. you're actually holding everything yeah. together. So it's still hard. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, every every pose is hard, which kind of leads me into my next question because most people don't realize that for a lot of these people, posing is the hardest thing. It's harder than the workout. It's harder than maintaining the nutrition. And it's one of those things that you can never really truly perfect. You always have to be constantly working on it. What has been your experience like with that? Or even for like, first off, what was that like for you? Was it a hard adjustment to sort of pick up the posing? Because like, like we said, when you're posing a specific area, I mean, you still have to have everything on point. Basically, you have to have everything flex at the right point. You have to have the right angle. Has that been a hard experience for you so posing actually has come really natural and easy for me I actually teach a lot of posing I just I don't know if it's just the mind to muscle connection but I watched a lot of Kevin Lebroni videos I lot I watched a lot of Arnold because I know the more graceful you are and the better you can just hit your pose and the more confident you are on stage the better off you're gonna do so with posing, all I can say is practice, practice, practice. You can never practice enough with posing. For figure, what is your favorite pose to do and what is your least favorite pose to do? So my favorite pose to do is probably my front pose mm -hmm. just because my legs are just, that is one of my really, really strong points mm -hmm. and I have a really small waist. My least favorite would probably be my back pose not because I don't like doing it but they say you win shows from the back yeah. and so like you are just trying to make sure you look the best from the back and make sure you hit that pose as hard as you can so that's probably my least favorite only for those reasons and now for going into figure I have to ask what was that experience like with the heels? Was that something that you really had to adjust to walking on those heels? Because people don't realize, I mean, like you said, when you're really depleted, I mean, just ha adding heels into that mix is can sometimes not be the best combination. What was that like? So in the beginning, I was a little shaky because I was kind of nervous. But then, you know, I just it just kind of kicked in and I just kind of just did it. You know, I just really didn't think about it. I've always been OK walking in high heels. So for somebody that doesn't walk very well in high heels, yeah, it'd probably be pretty hard. But it, it's, it's all posing and being on stage because you're in front of all those people and all those lights, you know, you nerves kick in. And when you're nervous, you're a little shaky. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a big adjustment from going to women's physique of not wearing high heels to wearing heels. But it really wasn't too bad. We had the tallest ever um, women's... Uh figure competitor who was six two on and that was a different that was a different story to hear her because she's like yeah i'm six seven in those heels and i was like oh okay you know that's that's a different that's a difficult thing but yeah i mean i mean the, the stuff that they make especially the women do i mean especially with the heels too i was like guys you never see that i mean that and that's just you know that's setting up for disaster i mean we've heard so many stories about people falling and it's just one of those things where just like you're posing you have to practice it so much that it becomes basically second nature where you could right. basically do it you know you could do it asleep, basically. I mean, now we get to talk about some of the good stuff. What is your go-to post-show meal? What is your favorite thing to eat after a show? So I always go with a burger and fries. Yeah. It's That's my thing. Burger and fries and then maybe like a small treat. I usually don't go crazy mm -hmm. just because I'm dairy-free. So I don't take in any dairy. I, all my protein that I do take in, like protein shakes, they're all plant-based just because dairy does not agree with me. So I have a very sensitive stomach, so if I overdo it, I'm just sick. So burger and fries is always my go-to. Do you still enjoy, like, dairy-free ice cream or anything like that when you're... Uh, you know, once in a while, I'll have a TCBY yogurt. They, marry, or they make a, a 
a yogurt from the silk milk, the almond milk. And that one's pretty good. I, I always say anytime anyone says that they can't really have dairy, I just feel so bad because I was like, you're missing out on ice cream. That's the, that's yeah, the one I thing that I would rather have cake than ice yeah, cream. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's. that's so I'm more of a cake cream. person. Yeah. Yeah. So, and probably my most important question that I ask all of my uh, health and fitness guests on here is that people don't realize that when you're on stage, I mean, you sort of manipulate your body through all of the working out and all of the dieting into looking a way that isn't sustainable. I mean, I've had so many people that come on and just say like, oh, those people just must be jacked and ripped that you interview like 24 seven. And it's like, no, that's, that's not the case. What are some ways that you sort of mentally prepare yourself for the fact that like, I am not going to look this good forever. Like this is just a look that I can maybe attain for a few days because a lot of people, even after the show, uh, even hours after some people have already started gaining weight, we've had people that have gained, you know, five to 10 pounds the next day. And some people have gained like 40 pounds, like within like two weeks, just because they've just dieted down so hard. But what are some ways that you sort of use mentally to sort of prepare yourself for like, Hey, I am going to put on some weight and it's going to be okay. Well, the first thing I want to say is the most important thing that you can do is reverse dieting. A lot of competitors will come off stage and yes, they have been depleted and they haven't been able to eat, you know, good food and stuff like that. And then they just go on a binge. So with me, I go and I, you know, I have my treat after the show. I might have like a good breakfast in the morning. And then right after that, it goes right back to the drawing board. I go right back into my meal preps and I go right back into my food. And then I slowly increase my calories. That way I don't get, you know, bloated, uh, a lot of water retention and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes it does, you know, take a mental kind of, I deal with the fat girl syndrome as it is because I was so heavy before and I'm just like, I've always had that fear of like going back. Yeah. So this sport really requires you to have thick skin. If somebody already has eating disorders and they start competing, I think it's just a recipe for disaster because it's just going to put them on the, you know, on the other, they're going to see themselves look so great. And then the look that you are there, especially with women, you can't sustain that. It's not healthy. But I think if you slowly start to get back to your healthy, normal weight and you, you do it through, you know, slowly getting there, I think it kind of helps more than if you just go on a binge and then you get fat in like two weeks. Yeah. So that's that would that's where I'm at on that subject and we didn't mention this before but she is a mom and that makes it even more impressive i mean being a mom like i always say is a full-time job and still being able to we've had so many moms on here where we've had at least probably a dozen or so moms on here where we talk about you know how are you still able to maintain that lifestyle while having i mean i know your son's a little bit older now so you don't have to you know worry about it as much as let's say if he was like five or six but still how has being a mom really affected your your training and your working out knowing that like it is a full-time job and you still sort of have to you know you're also a hairdresser so that's another basically full-time job so how are you able to juggle all of your time you know my my thing is a lot of people ask like well my biggest thing people say like well I don't have time to work out mm -hmm. well nobody has time to work out you have to make time to work out um you have to make it a priority and being a mom is I wanted to show my son healthy lifestyle. Like I didn't want him to fall into the same thing that I did, not knowing how to eat healthy and exercising and stuff like that. So with him, I more or less invited him to do it with me. So, and it, you know, kids are going to be kids. Teenagers are going to be teenagers. They're still going to eat, you know, all their stuff or whatever. But even if he can make a couple more healthier choices, then I know I did my job. You know, the thing is with like little kids, if you have little ones, try to find a gym that offers a daycare, you know, the way that you can take them there and, you know, get your hour workout in or, you know, take them to the park and play with them on the playground. There's many ways that you can do it without having to sacrifice your time with your kids. Absolutely. I mean, we've heard so many stories like that. And then also, I mean, like you said, there'll be kids will be kids. They'll eat sort of, you know, they'll have the hamburgers, the hot dogs, the pizza. And it's just, I'm still at that age. I, I just turned 24 where, you know, I, I still am at those last little things of a metabolism, like that young metabolism. So I, I am enjoying it while it lasts a little bit, but I do, you know, start to see it slowing down. So it's, you know, just about enjoying that while it lasts, but also picking up those healthy habits early on because like if you go cold turkey at like you're in your late twenties, then it's going to be very, very rough for you to sort of, you know, get that metabolism or to even, you know, really start to lose stuff because just your metabolism just really just 
flat dives down below. So I really just recommend to everyone, you know, starting those changes on early. I mean, it's just like it's just like everything. I mean, we've had we've had a language expert on here. It's just like with learning a language. If the, the younger you start, the better it's going to be for you. So it's you know, but it's never too late for anyone. I also like to point that out there. Yeah, as, uh, never yeah. too late. Never too late at all. Now you're also a hairdresser. So how has that sort of come into the bodybuilding too? Because most people, when they think about the stage presence, they just think about, you know, like how you look like physically. They don't think about, you know, you can win shows based on, you know, maybe how your hair looks or how your makeup looks. How is that? How has your background as a hairdresser really helped you out, you think, when it comes to your stage presence and what you and your and your look? So I've always done my own hair and makeup, which was good. It saved me money because it's very expensive. And I think it's actually helped because... I kind of know, you know, I'm already on top of it. I don't have to pay for somebody to do mine. I know what I like. I know what looks good. So I think it's definitely helped. And then I have also done hair and makeup for other competitors for the stage. So not only, you know, does my job kind of help me to get further on stage because I look good, I can also help other women do that too. What is your favorite hairstyle to do and what is your least favorite hairstyle to do? Um, favorite is probably big hair. I've always been, I'm like still an eighties child. Mm -hmm. So I like that big old Texas hair. <laughs> least, uh, least favorite, probably, um, I don't know, like curly permed hair. It's, it's hard to work with. Okay. So now that, that gives me to a backstory because I, it was my mom and dad's like a year ago. It was their 25th anniversary. We watched their old wedding video and just the hair back then. It was, it was spectacular. I mean, every uh, guys had mullets like at the wedding and just like, I always said, like to be alive, just, just to be alive in that era, just where hair was. I mean, nowadays you can't really grow that type of hair, but it was, it was definitely a sight to see. But embarrassingly, I will admit when my mom and dad first started dated, he did have a perm for six months, which really? we still give him crap to this day. Because, but his, his grandma, his mom made him do it. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I have no idea still how he was able to pull that off, but he, I, he didn't pull it off. So that's why we give him crap for it. But yeah, that's, I mean, just the hairstyle is just a huge thing that I love to talk about because, you know, nowadays there isn't really a hairstyle where I just kind of. Well, get and the thing is too, is I think I set myself apart from other competitors because I have the platinum hair. Yeah. And it stands out. So you, you need to stand out, whether it's your hair, whether it's your makeup, whether it's your suit. That's why the women's suits are so expensive because you have to find some way to have the judges look at you. Mm -hmm. You don't want them looking at the other girls. You want them dead on you. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, what's really helped me too is having the actual platinum blonde hair. What would you say is the biggest adjustment for your training that you had to do when it went from physique to figure? Because for most people who don't know, physique is basically, I mean, when they got rid of the bodybuilding class for women, physique is really what sort of replaced that. So physique, you're kind of looking at the ladies who are a lot more, a little bit more muscular or, or a little bit more bigger, but then the figure girls are the girls that are still in really, really great shape, but they're a little bit more of the leaner look. What was the biggest adjustment for your training wise for that? Honestly, you know, more time under tension, less breaks, you know, trying to just lean out. And, you know, I don't think there's a very big difference between women's physique and women's figure. Women's physique, yeah, they do come in a little bit harder and drier. But with size, you know, they still want that that V taper. Um, they still want them nice round shoulders. So I don't think there was really a, like a, a really big difference in my training. My thing is just always train hard and, you know, and, and then just come out like that. Yep. Yeah. And for most people who don't realize this, I mean, this will be released probably after the holiday, but we do have Thanksgiving coming up. What is your favorite thing to eat during Thanksgiving? Oh, probably the stuffing and the rolls. Like, Ooh, yes. Roll stuffing, mashed potatoes, and then probably pecan pie. Yeah. Yeah, we have the best we have the best potatoes, but yeah, the rolls, I mean, I'll go to town on. And then also pumpkin pie is my favorite. So we yeah. usually get like two or three of those for the whole family. We get like we have like a dozen or so people over. So yeah, it's gonna be it's one of those things I'm looking forward to. And what how do you how do you sort of deal with that workout wise? Is that sort of just one of your days Thanksgiving where you just sort of I mean, people that are in prep obviously you probably won't let yourself go, but just are you able to sort of for one day for Thanksgiving just say like, Hey, I can eat what I want and then how you sort of how how's your workout sort of affected by that? afterwards so like i know that like i'm gonna eat something good for thanksgiving so obviously this whole week i've been extra good about what i eat i'll probably still get up go do my cardio like nothing you know i'll be up before anybody is, is even even awake 
And then, you know, I just pretty much look at it as like a refeed day, you know, like I'm not going to go crazy. If you always got to have that self-awareness and, and, you know, be able to like stop when you know you're not going to make yourself sick. The next day, I'll probably feel a little sluggish when I'm working out, definitely because of all the carbs, but I might get a good workout because of the carbs. But my biggest thing is like, you know, do your, eat your meal, enjoy it. Don't think about dieting. And then the next day, just get right back on track. Now, I haven't asked this question in probably the last dozen or so health and fitness guests that we've had on, but when most people think about, you know, ways in, in order to maintain that healthy lifestyle or ways to really, you know, help keep that shape, sleep is not the number one thing that a lot of people think of, but it can be when it comes to muscle recovery. That's probably the number one thing. And it's, it's just a, such a huge, huge thing to get the proper amounts of sleep. How many, how many hours do you th say that you average during the day and what are some ways that you use in order to benefit the most from sleep when it comes to being in prep and trying to, you know, get that muscle recovery as much as you can? You know, I know sleep plays a really important role and that's the one thing that like America like is like the worst at. I try to at least get six to seven hours of sleep a night. I'm not a big nap taker, so I don't really take naps. I think my body has just adjusted to that many hours of sleep, but you're, it is correct. You know, like the more sleep, the more sleep that you can get, the better off your body is going to be able to recover and then sustain, keep to, to just keep going. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's just one of those huge things. We had a sleep expert come on and just talk all about that. And it's, you know, it's such an underestimator. Not that many people talk about it, especially on social media, which is, you know, understandable. They're not going to want to, you know, post all the time about, you know, like get, get the proper amounts of sleep, but it's one of those things that we absolutely love to bring up here. But now we go to our audience favorite and my personal favorite part of the podcast, a little questionnaire where I'm going to ask Tiffany here about a dozen or so questions, sort of a getting to know her. And we're going to see, we're going to see how she stacks up to all the other health and fitness guests that we've had on. So for our first question, what is your go-to workout song at the moment? um so it depends if i'm doing cardio i always put rihanna on s and m like that song will just get me going and then if i'm like working out with weights i like drake i like to listen to drake or tupac those are my two faves Yep. I'm more, I'm more of an old school where I got to get, you know, like my Metallica or my Iron Maiden on what I'm doing, but I have a problem where I, I'm lucky where I have a gym kind of at home that I work out at like 75% of the time, but then I have a gym that I drive to. But let's say like I'm doing like lat pull downs. I got to wait for the beat to drop. So sometimes like I'll just be sitting there for like 30 seconds and then people be like, what, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, what is he, what is he doing over there? And then it's like, Oh nope, I'm waiting for the beat to drop. So I know I got to work on it, but yeah, it's one of those, I, it, it really depends on for me too. But I mean, I'm an old school sucker for like all those old 80s songs and just that, that, that's the stuff that really, really hypes me up. But now out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could train with any celebrity, who would it be? Um, I would probably go with, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, obviously Arnold, we all want to train with Arnold. Um, but yeah, I would probably say Arnold, or there's a figure, um, Miss International in Denver. Her name's Camila Rodriguez, so I'd love to train with Camila. Okay, I gotta say, believe it or not, uh, you're gonna be, when I release this, probably like the 60th health and fitness guest that we've had on, and that is only the fourth time that Arnold has been mentioned for someone that people want to train with. Believe it or not, so out of the 60, 52 of them have been Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh yeah, I would so, like. Yeah, yeah. But I, I wouldn't get anything done. I'd yeah, just be staring at it the whole I, time. Well, that's the thing too. It's, it's for like all these people, like some of these like figure girls that we've had on. They're like, I want to train with Dwayne the Rock. It's like, you really think that you'd be able to keep up with Dwayne the Rock Johnson in the gym? Is I know like, I, <laughs> I keep up. With yeah, him. I just don't know if I'd be focused. Oh on, yeah. Oh well, now, yeah. I'd be focused on him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, Arnold. Arnold is obvious. Is my choice too. Just, well, just, I love his accent too. Just hearing him, like, even if he would yell at me in the gym, I think that'd be hilarious. Just, yeah, just, just, just to hear him talk, but absolutely. You know, another person that I think I would love to work out with, honestly, is one of my favorite guys is Dexter Jackson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. He's like the godfather of bodybuilding. Oh, so. yeah. And we, well, I yeah. had, I had Ronnie Coleman on the show uh, a week or so back and I'll be releasing that podcast, I think around Thanksgiving. But yeah, he was another guy that just talking to him, I was like, okay, dude, you you are just so cute. I even told him one of the questions I asked him was like, how do you even, like, did you have to build like special doors for yourself? I mean, it's like, how did you fit through? Like, I mean, the guy was so big where it's just, I mean, he was, he was an absolute, he was absolutely great to have on. But now out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could train any celebrity, who would it be? Um, let's see. 
Well, I would like to train like Rihanna. I love Rihanna. <laughs> I would love to yeah. train her. Yes. That would be that would be great too. I mean, our most popular answer is Kevin Hart, but that's one of those things where I'd be like, you wouldn't be able to get a workout in because you'd just be laughing the entire time. Yeah, you'd just be laughing. You'd the whole get time. the best ab workout of all time, but you I mean, other than that, that's that's about the only thing yeah. sure, that you'd ever get. So now what is one item that you always need to have in your fridge? Um, egg whites. Egg whites, yeah. Always, always have egg whites in there. Yeah. So for how does that how does that work for dairy though? If you if you don't eat dairy, how does that how does that work? Um, I just go with like a plant based protein. Oh, okay. Like a protein powder. I do a plant based, and then I drink almond milk. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Egg whites. Yeah. I was gonna say that's that's probably that and chicken are definitely tied for our our answer, and that's another one for me. But the most the most uh surprising answer that we've had is uh, mustard. A lot of people say that they have on their thing. Oh I, yeah, because it's. Yeah, it just adds flavor to them. It's like low calories. It's almost like no, it's like zero fat. And I, I never, never realized that. I mean, it's like, I always tell them, I was like, you might want to refit, think your life though. If mustard is the one thing that you got to have though in your fridge. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Yep. And we can see her, her dog is the, the, probably one of the cutest things ever. I mean, it, what is probably your favorite thing about, about your dog and the least favorite thing about your dog? My favorite thing is she's so good. Like she's so well behaved. I could take her outside with no leash. Oh, yeah. My least favorite thing is probably <laughs> I don't sure close her ears. <laughs> she gets scared. Like when oh, we go yeah. in public or we go into like stores and stuff, she gets scared and she'll like just I'll just have to like yeah. drag her along. I I was gonna say your dog is the most well behaved one we've had. Not hasn't made a sound, but like my dog is the exact opposite. I mean, she's still, she's really young. She's just about like, she's not even two years old, but like if, if, if she were to be on right now, she'd be barking constantly. She'd be like scratching at the screen. Like she's really like, she's super protective for a dog. That's like 10 pounds. So yeah, it's, I mean, I'm a huge dog guy myself. I mean, I'm one of those guys where if you invite me over to your house, I'm going to spend 75% of the time with the dog. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just how it is. I mean, I, I just love dogs so much, but now going back to our questionnaire, what is one thing that people who follow you on Instagram would be surprised to know if they met you in person? Um, that I have a 19 year old son. That's what I get. A lot of people are like, there is no way you have a 19 year old son. You do not look like that old. So <laughs> that's probably would be the biggest. I, thing. My mouth was about to drop when she told me that too, before when we were right before we we're about to start the interview, I was like, really? Wow. <laughs> you know that's that's awesome so is he has he sort of does he still work out a lot too with you or does he sort of do his own thing now well he does his own thing because we live about two hours apart oh, okay. he's up in college up in northern colorado so but yeah he still works out regularly and yeah he's he loves it still that's awesome what was his opinion about it when you first started bodybuilding i mean he must have been in his teens what was what was his what was his reaction to it he did not like the attention that I got. That's the thing. He didn't like the attention. Yeah. You know, that's my mom and, and his friends. All his friends. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. That was his thing. He didn't like it. Now it's grown on him and stuff. He's yeah. okay with it now. But we, we hear that, that was, all. We hear that all the time, especially especially moms that have boys, and then the boys' friends will just be like, "Oh, dude, your mom does." But I mean, it's we hear that all the time. So yeah, it's just one of those things where you know. It's, 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 it's a big struggle for some of the kids, but a lot of them do, like you said, it does really grow on them and then they come to appreciate, you know, the values that were instilled on them through that. Absolutely. So now we go to the most important question I'm ever going to ask you. What was the last TV show that you binge watched? Um, we watched the walking dead, me and my boyfriend. Yep. That was the last one that we watched binge. And now we're waiting till next year. So <laughs> yep. yeah, that was our binge. Oh, did the season just end or was yeah, it? Yeah, oh, it yeah. ended. So now we got to wait for like next year for the new yeah. season. I, I'm not going to lie. Like I started watching The Walking Dead two summers ago and I binge watched most of it for like the first five or six seasons. But then it just got to a point where I was just like, I don't know if I can deal with this <laughs> that much longer just because the episodes. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't I don't know. So I, I, I do think once the series ends, then I'll probably finish up where I left off. But just like, yeah, it, it got to a point where I was like, there's so many episodes. But for me. I mean, Game of Thrones is probably the one that I haven't binge watched, but it's it's been one one of those long things too. But binge watch for me, believe it or not, I don't think you would ever guess this, but New Girl was last year. Oh, okay. I binge my older we brother watch Friends a lot, like we watch Friends. Okay, well, yeah. that's going to lead me into my my next thing. So next week, I'm having you know the actress that played Ross's first wife, Carol, the lesbian. 
Yeah, she's coming on the show because she started her own charity. So I've been emailing with her the last like few months. And then we finally set out a date and time where she's going to come on to talk about her charity. But then I told her, I said, you do realize that half my questions are going to be friends questions, right? She goes, oh, yeah, I get that all the time. So I, I'm coming up with like the 30 best friends questions to ask her and just firing off like as soon as she gets as soon as she gets. Yeah, Jane Sibbett, she's going to be on the podcast. So I'll definitely send you a link to that podcast when it gets uploaded, yeah, because that's, yeah. that, that's we, yeah. I'm so excited to have her on. Like, I'm a huge that's probably my favorite TV show that in the office are tied. For, yeah, for that. So I love Friends. Oh, so good. Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. And and it gives me one step closer to my ultimate goal of having Jennifer Aniston on the podcast. So yeah, right. the so, best. Working working my way up slowly. I mean, like I always said, if yeah. I could ever get her on the podcast, you know, I'd stop doing this because it'd just be like it wouldn't be worth doing it anymore because it's like you've reached the top. So, right. well, what is a guilty pleasure movie that you enjoy? Um, it's probably Scarface. I love watching Scarface. I know all the words to it. I've watched it a million times. <laughs> I would have never got, but yeah, that is, it, it, if I ever do my top three movies of all time, that is one of them. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a top movie. Definitely. Oh, oh my yeah. God. If that, that's one of those movies too, where if it's on, even though it's like three hours long, I'll stop whatever I'm doing and just watching it, no matter what part it's at. I mean, I remember, this is a funny story where I was writing my thesis for college and that came on and I literally stopped it. And my, and my paper was due like that weekend and I still stopped it and watched it for like two hours yeah. before I was like, it's okay, I actually got to kind of get back on it. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I almost failed that, but you know, it was worth it just to see Tony Montana do his thing again. For yeah, for sure. But my guilty pleasure, I mean, my ultimate, my first date night movie. Okay, all the guys out there, any of my friends out there that are listening, close your ears for the next like thirty seconds. But the Princess Bride. Oh, nice. Guilty, yeah, I mean, it's my guilty pleasure movie. I like you, like you and Scarface. I know all the, I know all the words to it. I mean, whenever it's on again, I'll watch it. So yeah, that that for sure is my guilty pleasure movie. But now. What is, I mean, if someone were to walk up to you on the street and say, like, obviously, like, wow, you look amazing. I sort of want to adapt a more healthy and fit lifestyle. What would be the best piece of advice that you would give that person in order for them to be successful? To just start. That's the thing. Everybody's like, I'm going to start Monday or, you know, or like, just start. Start now. Make healthy choices. You know, just be more mindful of what you're doing and try to get in a little bit of exercise, you know, every day and just start, you know, just start. That's all I would say. Now, here come my two favorite questions of the questionnaire as we start to sort of wrap up the questionnaire. But one of the things that I realized when I started working out a lot is that and got a little bit bigger is that you're going to get asked to move a lot of people's furniture. You're going to get asked to open a lot of pickle jars. Every time my parents come home, I mean, I'm still at home with my parents for the next few months. Every time my parents come home with groceries, you know, I still got to basically unload the entire car. Have you found that just because of the way that you look that people assume that like you can do favors for them, like sort of like help them with furniture and stuff like that? Have you found that to be the case? Oh, yeah, definitely. They're always like, let Tef do it. She's strong. Look at her muscles. Let her do it. Yeah, a lot of people are like that, definitely. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I got to a point where I just sort of, I mean, like, still the, every summer now, like, I basically, since I'm at that age where people are starting to move out now, where it's like every summer is like every weekend, I basically have a different friend ask me, like, oh, hey, can you come and help me move? So it just got to the point where I realized, you know, like, hey, these people are sort of, I mean, in a weird way, they recognize that I do work out a lot and I do put a lot, I do have a lot of dedication into it. So, you know, I do, I do tend to appreciate it that way. But now, I mean, probably my favorite question to ask, especially the women that we have on, obviously this is a multi-million dollar idea before I ask it. So anyone out there with any ideas, get on it. But when it comes to clothes for fit women or women that have muscles that are in shape, your clothing options are limited. Like I always like to say, like if you have big shoulders, dresses are sort of out of the picture. Jeans are another thing that we hear of that just really don't tend to work well. What are some ways that you sort of adapt to the fact that clothes for you aren't, that clothes for other women are not normally going to work as well for you? You know, it's really hard to find stuff to, that works. Um, I wear a lot of leggings because <laughs> leggings stretch. Um, there's a couple pairs of jeans at like the buckle that kind of fit good, the cam cams. And then the Freddy jeans, always, they fit pretty good too, but they're kind of expensive. Um, with tops, I either go with like halter tops or cotton because cotton stretches. But yeah, I find it's very hard, very difficult to find cute clothes for women of like our athletic built. I, I always like to say, if anyone has an idea, that's a multi-million dollar idea, so get on it. I've had, you know, all these women on the podcast that are more than willing to, you know, spend the money if you have it released. So if you have anything like that, let me know, give, let me know and I'll, you know, hook all these people up that I have on the show because absolutely it's one of those things where, I mean, you know, wearing, you know, gym clothes all the time is fine, but I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, you gotta, you gotta go out every once in a while. So you gotta have, you gotta have clothes definitely that are ready for that. But now if you could go back in time and talk to the 18 year old version of yourself, what would be the best piece of advice you would give her? Um, to just start early, 
you know, start with your health and fitness as early as possible, just so that you know that you can prolong your life and be around to see your grandkids and teach your kids healthy ways. So yeah, just start early, less partying and more, more gym time. Yeah. Still enjoy the parties every once in a while, but yeah, yeah. just, just like in everything else, just like with your food in moderation. I mean, you don't want to go out, you know, every single weekend and just be out, you know, I mean, believe me, I went through that phase in college, but you know, now, now it's at the point where, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay in every once in a while just to, just to recover and also to help. But yeah. now for our last question of the questionnaire, what is one thing about the sport of bodybuilding that you would change if you had the all knowing power to do so? Um, that women had the equal amount of, um, prize money. Oh yeah. So like the Olympia, you know, men are still, um, you know, paid a lot more than women. And I think women should have equal rights on how much money the prize money is given because the women work out and work just as hard as the men do. If not harder in some cases. If, yeah, if not harder because yeah. it's hard for yeah. us to get leaner. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think, um, having that, you know, equality, I think that's where, where I would, what I would change. Well, and honestly, for me, I say that the women should get more just because let's face it. A lot of the people that go there are there for the women. I'd say more so than the men when they come there and they look at those shows. So I think, you know, they should probably end up getting more than the men, but yeah, it's definitely one of those things where the pay thing is a huge thing for me personally. It's like, I think with the dieting thing, it can just be so risky. It's like, we've had women on here that have gotten down to like 2% body fat for like their shows where it's like, you got to be careful with that stuff too. Because like when people see that, they think that that look could maybe be attainable, but it's like, you're going to get, I mean, that there's so much stuff that can happen to you if you're at that low of a body fat percentage. I mean, and prep brain is just another thing that we, that we don't, that people don't tend to realize. I mean, like your brain, when you get that low and that lean, I mean, you can really do some funky stuff. Do you have any funny stories, at least with prep brain, where we've had people like where they forget their car keys or they just forget stuff? Oh man, there's so many times where like I've driven from one place to another and then I get there and I'm like, how did I get here? Like, <laughs> I don't even recall driving that entire way. I'm like, how did I even get here? Yeah, it's it's very prep brain. You're very kind of spacey. You 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 definitely have to like think a little bit more i honestly i had one moment where i had no idea how it was possible but uh, when i was in uh high school i i went through like a week or so where i was recovering from the flu so i didn't really have lunch at school so because i didn't want to you know have a whole regurgitation of it but basically when one time when i was walking down the i remember it was like going from like lunch to a different class i had no idea how i'd gotten there like i was like what what happened or whatever but now since i started talking to people i was like maybe that was like a little bit of a prep brain thing for me just because i was so just because i hadn't eaten for so long like i that whole week i didn't really eat that much so maybe that was a thing so i finally figured that out because i've been talking to people all the time i was like there's this one experience where like i couldn't even like tell that i was like moving or whatever that like i couldn't find all of a sudden i was like in a classroom but I think I've finally gotten down to it. So, I mean, that's another benefit of having this podcast. I can also help with some personal stuff for me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, you mentioned before that, you know, you just competed in a show. What is that feeling like? I mean, we just talked about, you know, what the feeling is like being on stage, but winning the sh I mean, is it one of those things where you just sort of have to pinch yourself or is it one of those things where, I mean, like you said, you won the year before, but what is that feeling like? So coming into this show, never doing figure and winning the overall, I won the overall and the masters. And then I won the overall in the open category. And once you win, I don't know. I just have always had that. Okay. Now I got to work for the next level. So now it's back to the drawing board. What do I need to work on? Cause I'm going to nationals next year. So, um, you know, I do celebrate and I do like, you know, try to, you know, like be proud and everything. But I have a one thing that I have like issues with is I don't like talking about me because I feel like I'm bragging and I don't like that. So I don't like to feel like I'm arrogant. <laughs> um, but you know, I do, I do celebrate a little bit, but honestly it's just right back to the game plan. Like, okay, now to the next, now to the next. And then lastly, I mean, being we're both in cold states i mean i'm in minnesota and you're in colorado where it can get very cold during the winter what are some ways that you sort of are able to convince yourself when even your body's just telling you like let's just stay inside and you know just chill out and watch tv especially when it gets really really cold what are some ways that you convince yourself to go out and work out or is it just is it just that you've ingrained it so much in your mind that you don't even have to do any convincing no the the one thing that i think about is what would the champion do mm -hmm. do you want to be a champion when I don't want to do it and I don't want to eat it and I don't want to, you know, like I'm 
being like self pity on myself, I take a step back and I say, what would the champion do? And then I go. And once I'm there, I'm there. But that it's just that mental, you know, it's like, how bad do you want it? That's all it is. That's all it comes down to. How I, bad. And I got to say for people out there, I have two things of advice. Make sure that when you are working out in the winter, though, that you do not have to walk home very far on leg day, especially when it's slippery outside. Because I had one experience in college where I had to walk half a mile back to my dorm from the gym. And I slipped about four times because I just got done with leg day and my legs were just still shaking from it. And then also, if you are going to shower, if you are going to be sweaty, make sure that you are completely dry by the time you go outside. Because I had another experience where my hair became so frozen that when I tried to move it, part of it like crumpled up. Yeah, because, yeah. So that that's a, that's a bad ex- that's a bad experience. But yeah, yeah make sure you just bundle up. Too, oh, oh, absolutely, you know? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you said before, like you're done with the shows for a while now. How long are you thinking of taking before? Or when is your next show? Do you think that you're going to compete in? So I think me and my coach have decided we're going to do the USA's, which is next year, next summer. So yeah. So we'll have a little bit of time to focus on what we need to improve and then before we get a game plan and come into nationals. Absolutely. Well, again, I mean, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'll leave a link down below to her Instagram. Is there any other ways that people could follow you or if they wanted to get it, wanted to talk to you for some advice? Are there any other ways other than Instagram to contact you? Um, yeah, they can, I mean, they can contact me on Facebook at Tiffany Hernandez and then, but most of the time, um, that would be the best way or my email, which is tland at All right. Yeah. I'll leave a link down below for all those things. And again, Tiffany, thank you so much for coming on the show. I mean, it's just a huge inspiration talking to someone. I mean, any, anytime we have a mom on here, that's just, that's just a whole different level of inspiration, just how they're able to get that done with all of the other things in life. But again, I mean, we wish you nothing but the best. And again, thank you so much for coming on and we'll definitely keep everyone updated on your current progress, what, what shows you're competing at. And again, like, thank you so much for coming on. And right. lastly, is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my boyfriend, Lonnie Harrison. He's actually my coach and he, um, prepped me for this last show and he brought me in at my best. And I would like to give a shout out to one of my really, really good friends and also coach, uh, Justin Rogers, Jay Rogers over, um, at Greeley Health and Fitness in Greeley, Colorado. Absolutely. So again, you guys. You heard that. Shout out to all those people. Go and give them a follow as well. Now, Tiffany Hernandez, again, thank you so much for being on the show. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye.